Comrades, this is the second video of the Arbian K simulator using the port version thanks to Comrade GDZX. And in this one, I will go to the second difficulty level because in the first gameplay, it was almost one hour and I had no malfunction. So let's see if the second level is more challenging than the plant operator. I will jump right into the game. This means the intro. Well, hi. I will I dismiss the no talk as well, curious. because it's the same. And I will select Shift, oh, oh. Shift Supervisor. More breakdowns, reactor and turbine at 80% power. The plant is barely breaking even. Okay, so let's see. Came from Human Resources. It's official. You're the new Shift Supervisor. Good luck to you. You're going to need it. Right now, the plant is at partial load. We're at about 80, 85% load. Uh, we are getting some xenon poisoning. You've got to get the load back up on this unit. I'm not sure what brought them down to that point, but you need to go talk to the operators that are on to get the load back up. If we poison out, we're going to be offline. We don't need that right now. The budget's already shot as it is. Good luck to you, and congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Wow, that's so exciting. We get already xenon poisoning into the game at the second difficulty level. So I will start opening some panels and see what's the general state. Let's open the power regulation, turbine control. And we already see we are just making 649 megawatts. This is a very low production. Let's increase power set point. So you see a neutron rate here increasing. <coughs> I will open <coughs> I will open the schematics. Things look fine in the main circuit and only one pump in the condens condenser. That's fine. Later I will turn on the second one. Let's look at the reactor core status. So xenon is at 129.1. If the values are the same, I mean the magnitude is the same as in the demo version that should be really far from poisoning so that's okay it's not surprising because a power of 80% is quite quite high actually okay i will keep increasing power in the reactor let's go to 85% trends look to, to be stable so no worries about that and i will change the metric uh, sorry the unit system into metric to be consistent with the soviet union so let's go to this menu here units metric time step don't bother about this with modern computers um the 200 milliseconds it was just for really slow computers from back in the 90s if the game was bugging okay we're in metric already uh, you see that the turbine pressure set point is at 10,000 kilopascal we can decrease this so i will set the turbine in manual and open the valve manually it's at 72% 72, 72 now. Let's go up to 75. 77. And keep an eye on reactor level because when you increase valve opening in a turbine, you are decreasing the pressure in the drum and the reactor. Decreasing pressure means you increase the volume of the voiding. So this will automatically increase the level. So be careful with that. Keep increasing. Let's go to 80%. Okay, and I will open some more panels. What's it? What's it? Hot well pump chip, okay? Acknowledge. You just lost a hot well pump. You gotta yeah. get another hot well pump yeah, in yeah, service yeah. right now before you lose DA level. You are right. Quickly. Um Let's turn on the first one, repair it. Okay, $200. Uh, doesn't turn on. Let's try the second one. Okay, nice. So just like less than five minutes of gameplay and we already got one malfunction. Let's continue increasing power. So, okay, you see the pressure already decreased at 9 megapascal, so 91 kilopascal, 9100 kilopascal, sorry. So 
my intention is to let this decrease uh, down to 7400 kilopascal, which is close to the point where we get the alarm for low steam temperature. And then I will switch back to auto. When you switch from manual to auto, it, rem it remembers the pressure at that moment. So it uses that as a target pressure. Valve control signal, I will open a bit more to speed up the decrease of pressure to 84. At, and at the same time, I will increase reactor power to, 80 per, to 90 percent to keep up with the higher demand from the turbine. Everything stable in the trend, so I will go ahead to 95 percent of power set point. And I will open the budget change to see how we are economy-wise. We are making $276 per minute, so that's nice. We're in a positive rate. Let's leave this here. And I will open some more schematics. Drum flows. We see the pressure here, which, which uh, is the same as the pressure set point of the turbine inlet. Actually, it should be a bit different because the losses of the main steam line, but I'm not really sure if the pressure set point is actually measured at the turbine entry or actually is a drum sensor. Not really sure about that. Because you see it's the same value even with decimal points and they change at the same moment. So, yeah. No, no drag in this main steam line. Okay, let's go to the... The aerator flows, pressure is okay, 148 kilopascal, feed water systems, let's place it here. I will also open the trend, um, description, okay, main steam dump control, it's fine, it's in auto, and it's the set point is at the maximum, I think. Yeah. I'm happy with that. So no problems now. I will open more the the turbine valve because pressure is not really decreasing now. You see how we increase the drum steam flow when we open the valve. And this is what causes the pressure decrease. Okay, things go back to normal, so I will keep increasing opening. And you see now a nice rate of decrease of the pressure, which is the yellow line, drum pressure. This is our target to decrease drum pressure down to 7400 kilopascal and this will allow us to reach a higher generated load more quickly so we will just start earning more money more quickly thanks to the potential energy stored in the pressure of the, of the drum okay 8100 kilopascal Tell me something. Have you looked at the reactor fueling schedule? Not yet. You've got to get some fuel in this reactor. You're burning up your channels. Okay. Let's see. Fuel burn up is 69%. Come on, man. I will not look at this at least uh, before it goes below 50%. And one advice from Conra uh, Comrade Matt PD. In the last video, uh, the refueling got backed, so I could not refill after the second line of channels. So the advice is to make sure the fuel monitor is with these four high stacks here. So it's a good practice to use it every now and then, like this. Well, you need to wait for a while until it appears, the reading. Come on. Well, I'm not really sure, but in theory, if you have four high stacks here, you can refill. But if you still have the number from the previous reading, it, it may bug. So we'll try this this time. Okay, the drum is at 7600 kilopascal. I will open a bit more the inlet of the 
reactor. 75. Okay, and let's be ready to switch to auto. More or less at 74. Okay, now switch to auto and the pressure point that it was recorded is 7408 kilopascal. So this will be the set point that will govern the opening of the valve. Now I will increase the reactor power to 100%. Sorry, I went to 105. 100%. You see neutron flux catching up to 100.2%. You see it doesn't melt down. It's so good that in this version you don't have the meltdown at 100%. You, want, you can go much higher without this glitch. Okay. It doesn't mean you will not eventually mm, blow up the reactor, but it will happen like in a physical way, not just because you go to 100.1%. Okay, you see when when the even at 100% it cannot keep the pressure set point. It just, of course, it cannot open the valve more than 100%. So in this case, you see the drum pressure is higher than the pressure set point indicated in the auto control. So that's normal. And don't worry, it will not blow up because we also have the steam dump. If eventually it gets up to 30, 30.5 megapascal, which is not possible uh, unless we close the inlet valve of the turbine. If this happens, then it will open the steam dam, which bypasses the steam directly to the condenser. But, uh, so it uh, it doesn't allow the pressure to go above this point. So in, it unloads the turbine and also all the, syst the pressurized system before the turbine. Okay, that's very good. We're making a lot of money now, 325 and still we don't need to refuel still the burn up is at 65 percent let's look at other things uh, we have the polisher 123 percent that's pretty okay the polisher 2 is ready to go in it's at zero percent so it's totally clean and the conductivities are okay the dream the drum steam is at 1.45 percent and the d at less than one percent so no need to worry about regenerating now. Let's see what happens with the pump number one in the condensate. In the hot well, sorry. I will try to turn it on. Yeah, it works now. So we repaired it, we paid $200. And now it works. I will switch off the pump number two. Let's see. One alarm, hot well level pump cheap. Okay, yeah, it was me. It's a good practice to cycle through the pumps sometimes. So if there is one malfunction, you will find it before it catches you by surprise. Okay, we are above 1000 megawatt, which is good. What else can we do while we wait for a malfunction? Refuel, I, I don't really want to refuel with so much, so few burn up. Let's check the off, offline core cooling system. Everything is off. Correct. Let's check the diesel ECC pump. So it's in auto. Correct, the pump one and two are stopped. And everything is correct for the normal functioning. Let's see if it water pumps and systems. Okay, we have pump number one and two on the three off. The level says two, but it must be three. I will open the inlet valve of the pump number three. So in case the one or the two trips, I can immediately turn on the number three and then just turn on the discharge valve so we don't lose this like 20 seconds that it takes to open the inlet valve. This can really save us from a big problem. Okay. 
uh, we are in three element control so this refers how we control the drum level um, one element control basically looks at the level like a distance in centimeters or whatever but when we have high pressure boiling systems which contain two phases or so like water and gas it's not possible to control them just with one parameter because they are really dynamic systems so you need a three element control so the three element can be level pressure and steam flow or level pressure water inflow and you get it so when you have the three levels you know the full thermodynamical state of the drum you could not know it only with one um, element either steam temperature or level or water level so that's why you switch from one element control to three element control during the startup when the system starts to pressurize and boil more and more then you should go to three element control have you used your fuel monitor lately to check? Yeah, yeah 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 don't worry boss look at the hot well level it's oscillating a lot we have to see what's going on here so i will turn on the third pump in the condensate system that's even worse i will turn off the second one okay let's let's turn on the second pump which i forgot to do totally let's see the alarms it appears that your da level control circuit has failed your da is okay. going high thank you either that or the valves failed either send an operator check the valve put it in manual you better do something because you're going to flood this da which will pump water back to the turbine and tear us up okay so da level i will try to find the problem by myself it means switch the da level to manual okay and let's do it quickly da level control manual set point um da drain valve let's open the drain valve of the radiator and let's check at the trend here if it decreases it doesn't yet Condenser vacuum system, nothing to do. The aerator steam flow and pressure control. Okay, let's set it to manual. And go back to auto. Here, the problem seems not to be here. Let's check the alarm. The Ukrainian authorities just called. We're getting assessed a massive fine because of all the radiation we're dumping out the vent stack. Either fix it or we got to shut the unit down right now. Okay, EPA filters it seems. Okay, but I have bigger problems now. Like these are in manual. Um, I don't know, man. like look at the deaerator level is just increasing so maybe the i will turn on the third feed pump but i don't think it's this i will increase the deaerator drain valve Yeah, no, it's too high. Let's uh, let's decrease the steam valve. Mm, 
no man, I don't know what to do. Okay, I found it. So I need to go back to auto in the DA8 level control. So the here it was the malfunction, it was not in the DA8 pressure control. So I will switch the pressure control into auto. Uh, it's quite obvious, it was telling me it was the deaerator level control too high, but I didn't think the malfunction will be too so obvious. So, okay, we fix it um, by ourselves. It means we save 90% of the price that con the contractor was charging us to find and fix the problem. Now, let's concentrate on the radiation emissions. So, vent stack radiation level high. Okay, I guess it's the EPA filter. Let's look at it. Repairs. Repair, re replace HEPA filter. High radiation in the containment. What happens? For whatever reason, your DA pressure control is not working right. Put it in manual, run it manually, get an operator down to check it, fix it, do Again? something but get Again. Let's go to manual. Let's go back to auto. Check the alarms. Ah, that's okay. Just very slightly below. But um Okay, I will increase a bit pressure set point, otherwise we'll keep getting this alarm. So I will set it to 75, 7500 MPa, okay. Let me check, I'm still recording. I am. It seems I fixed the radiation problem, so fixing the EPA filter did the job. And the DA radiator seems fine too, because I switched to manual then to auto. And now, well, I'm, sure, I'm not sure because there's some oscillation here. Okay, the pressure control doesn't give any message of repairing. I will go to the feed water pumps and turn off one of the three because I just was did I just did this while trying to find the problem. So let's turn off the number one. And we got the message here. Okay, and we um, close the discharge valve. Okay, everything is fine now. Neutron flag at 100%. It seems we fixed the malfunctions. Things are running smoothly. High conductivity in the hot well. Let's see, conductivity in the deaerator is increasing. It's at 2.19. So the, if we have conductivity in the hot well, it must be that we have a leak in the condenser. It's the highest probability. So I will repair condenser tube leak. Let's see. I don't know if it solved the problem, but we'll check back the conductivity in a while. Well, it's already decreasing, so I guess it was the problem. 
By the way, the center core only is engaged again, so I will disengage it. And we are already below 50% of fuel burn up, so maybe now it's a good time to refill the first line of channel. So let's go ahead. I will decrease power to 90. Sorry, I went to 85. 90 is good. So let's start removing spent fuel. Fuel. Um, fuel monitor. Okay, not sure if I'm allowed to try it now. I will do it anyway. Excuse me, comrades, I was in a phone call, so I paused the recording and the simulation. So this is a new feature implemented by comrade GDZX. So now we can pause the game in here in the extras. So I will depause it and see if we can refill. It doesn't seem to work. I will close the panel and open it again. I will try with the second channel. No, we'll try the monitor. No, it doesn't seem to work. Let's go to center core only. No, it seems there is nothing to do. So, the same as the previous simulation. I will switch off fuel consumption. So now fuel burnout will stay at 46%. And I will increase power set point to 100%. Okay. Okay, let's have a look around. So earning money, $296. I will look at the budget. So total gross income. So the total profit is $14,000. I didn't look at the beginning, but now we have this reference. Okay, it's a pity that the refueling is always buggy. It happened in the demo version, it happens now. At least now it doesn't crash the game. In the demo version, usually it made all the simulator to crash when you try to operate the refueling. You also see that the center core got slightly inserted, like 1.2%. I would say this is a bit dangerous because of the graphite tips. You are right in the area where the movement on the roads have the opposite effect of what they are meant to. I think it's like 5% or so of the total length covered by these graphite tips. So yeah, that's not very good for controllability, having them attached to the rest of the um, absorber rods, but I'm not sure how um, how high the fidelity is to the real thing, so I'm not sure this really matters now when you have all the others at 16% insertion. Okay, I think we are at like more than half an hour of simulation, like 27 minutes it seems. So for the moment, we just had some malfunctions in the deaerator automatic level control. We fixed it by switching back to manual and back, uh, to manual and then back to auto. So then we could repair it. We had uh, EPA filter malfunction, which spread some radiation in the surroundings in Ukraine. We had a condenser 
tube leak that we detected because there was an increase of conductivity uh, in the hot well. We were told about this by our manager, so that's good because if we, you, you just have the reading from the circulating water pumps, you don't know exactly where the conductivity increase happens, so it could be in any place in the circuit, but there is a good chance that it's caused by a, by a condenser tube leak. So it's leaking mineral water from outside the plant into the demineralized water in the circuit. Okay. So the other things that could happen is that one fuel channel is ruptured. I guess if this happens, we'll see in the absorber rod control monitor, one of the symbols goes like a yellow cross. Uh, this LECC pump, I don't know how we would realize about this if we don't use, maybe we get a message from our boss. Um, fuel bundles, if you are refueling and you don't drop the spent fuel exactly on the bin, then it's dropped inside the containing building and you have to clean it. EPA filter with it, SD heat exchange loop 1, loop 2. So how would we realize about one of these? I'm not really sure. A rejector. So usually this you will find out during the startup or because of a loss of vacuum. Let's see the alarm. Rejector circulation palm tree. Okay. You just lost reactor recirculation pump. Quickly. Uh, here and here. So it's a loop one. Open, close. <clears throat> okay, acknowledge. So I forgot to to leave the reserve pump ready to be switched on out immediately as I did with the feed water pumps, but that's okay because you can perfectly run the reactor with only one pump in the recirculation circuits without a problem. So I, yeah, this was broken, so I will repair it, two hundred dollar, and switch it on. and then open the outlet valve. So remember, you need to have the inlet valve open and the outlet closed to switch on the pump, and then when the pump goes on, then you open the outlet. And you see we have two on in the loop number one and two on in the loop number two. I will place this here. Yeah, okay. And I will... Um, Open the inlet valve of the pump number three of the loop two because the same if one goes tripping, uh, we'll be ready to to quickly turn on the pump number three and once it's on, we open the discharge. So if you do this, you decrease the time you need to start circulating water by two. Okay, so everything looks good. I think I will end the video here, but as usual, I will have a very intense finale. And we'll see if we can steadily operate this reactor at a slightly higher power neutron flux than this. Let's see, 120, 125. Let's see if all the systems hold up well at this power level. So to increase the level, I will go automatic, using the automatic power set point, 205%. And then I will go to manual, and if the rate is positive, I will just leave it. If it's negative, we'll need to pull a bit roads. So if I go to manual now, for sure the rate is negative because we are slightly above the power set point, so now it's trying to decrease neutron flux. So I will do it now. So expect the neutron flux to keep decreasing now. I will switch the automatic reactor control to off. Now we are in manual, so 
let's keep an eye on neutron flux. 106.5.7, okay, we're in a positive rate. Possibly it was oscillating at that moment. Have you used your fuel monitor lately to check the fuel yep. in your reactor? Yep. Okay, neutron flux 108%. So remember, above 105%, you cannot control it manually. So if you want to act on the neutron flux now, you have no other way to to do so. That uh, why is your neutron flux? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To manually insert or uh, move absorber rod. So we are at neutron flux of 112.8. So let's take this rod here and with these streaming arrows let's insert it a bit you see it's decreasing very sharply now so let's let's withdraw it a bit 20 percent 109.9 110.3 okay so now we will wait it to increase a bit let's go to 120 and try to manually control the reactor is just moving one single rod, this one here. Remember, withdraw, increase reactivity, insert, decreases reactivity. So I will insert just a bit. Okay, 21.6 insertion. I'm talking about this absorber rod. Now it's pretty stable, 118.2.4. Remember that because of the positive void, look, we already damaged uh, many of the uh, channels. You see the symbol here. Fuel temperature is at 923, so it seems around 900 Celsius is when you start damaging bundles. So I will connect the alarms, uh, fuel temperature in loop one, loop two. <clears throat> okay, I will disconnect again the alarms because now they will not stop. So we're at 124, I will try to insert a bit. You just lost a hot well pump. You got to get another hot well pump. Hot well pump. Okay. Are you aware of the fact that you have low water quality? Okay. Yes. That's because the fuel bundles melt down, but don't worry. Um, Connected system. I lost one pump. Let's turn it on. Repair 200. So you see all the fuel bundles are damaged. Temperatures are well above 900 degrees in each side. We are at a neutron flux of 125%. It's pretty Tell stable. Me, how long are you going to operate with a bad polisher unit in service? Yeah, you are right about that. Um, you see, because you damage fuel bundles, probably fuel leaked to the water. It reached the polish and the polisher is pretty Dirty, the the conductivity conductivity is at hundred percent. level is low. You better get it. In so what why I will do now is to switch to auto just to see if we can. Oh no. My God, I didn't expect that. Did you see that? So I just did the experiment to see if I was able to maintain manually the power at 120 percent. But then I damaged fuel bundles. And at some point when everything was going out of control, I said, OK, let's switch to auto to see if I can go back to 105 percent of power. But what happened right at the moment when I click auto is there is the explosion. So. This looks 
very similar to the actual Chernobyl accident because all the absorber rods were out or most of them because I was very at the end of the fuel cycle but I stopped uh, fuel burn up because I could not refuel so at the moment I switched to auto and the control system says okay we are way above 105 percent so let's insert rods immediately you are inserting all these rods but actually you are inserting the graphite tips in most of the rods so this makes a small spike in power and you are already like at 100 30 percent of power so it's already pretty high this spike of power fuel bundles are already super hot so probably they rupture it goes into exponential growth uh, of the reaction because of the positive void and boom yeah that was crazy i didn't expect that i thought i would i would be able to go back to auto okay this was it for the shift supervisor second level of difficulty i hope you like the video see you in the next video Bye.